Nathan Kerr is serving or served in the Australian Army for nine years, predominantly as a sniper, and in 2010 was medically discharged following a training accident in preparation for deployment into Asia. He is a PhD student at the University of Newcastle, researching military veterans and their transition into civilian life through the lens of occupational therapy. Please welcome Nathan Kerr. Good afternoon. So I want to share with you an idea that I have uh, to establish a consumer-driven, strengths-based uh, outdoor therapy program that would support the transition out of military service and into veteran status and to reintegrate into a civilian life. So my interest in this area stems from my own personal experience, uh, not just from my own uh, discharge, but watching my mates discharge uh, and watching some of them take their lives. I initially joined the Australian Army in 2001, was fortunate enough uh, to be given the opportunity to attempt to be a sniper and then deployed repeatedly throughout Asia and the Middle East. I loved it and it was my identity. Unfortunately though, in 2010, I was injured, uh, rehabilitated and then medically discharged, which uh, would be an understatement to say that I was devastated. Really not sure what to do with the skills that I'd acquired. I seemed to naturally progress towards being a uh, security contractor, working again for the Australian government across Asia and the Middle East and realised that I still hadn't addressed my transition and reintegration. So in 2014, I took myself off to university, uh, started occupational therapy, and at the end of last year, graduated uh, OT after conducting a scoping review on occupational therapy for military personnel and military veterans experiencing PTSD, which I've been fortunate enough now to roll into a PhD looking at the veteran transition experience. But it was the scoping review that made me realise how beneficial a outdoor therapy that was consumer driven would be uh, in the support of transition and reintegration. And that actually connects really well how to not just I, but a number of the uh, men that I served with now utilise the outdoors to support our own mental health and wellbeing. So what do I mean by outdoor therapy? Uh, the literature could show that it would be referred to in a number of ways, wilderness therapy, horticultural therapy or forest therapy. But more broadly, what I'm talking about is an intervention that's provided to an individual or any group in a natural outdoor setting. And we range the activities that you engage in from low demand in low and quiet spaces to high demand activities that require your complete presence and full attention. When we look at the literature around the therapeutic factors that should exist, of course, you would have the outdoors itself, then the physical self challenged by the outdoors, and then lastly, the psychosocial self, and that's the challenge of irrational thoughts and behaviours. In terms of aims of such a program, we're looking to achieve an aim across either the emotional, behavioural, psychological, or interpersonal domains. So the scoping review that I mentioned that I conducted at the end of uh, last year, uh, bearing in mind the findings would, would be for the most vulnerable in transition, right? That is anyone with uh, a psychological condition, more specifically uh, PTSD. <clears throat> so the themes that came out uh, from that scoping review is how beneficial a therapeutic environment and a warrior identity would be. So a therapeutic environment would be one that replicates a military environment and avoids a medical environment. So that is to say it has routine and structure. Uh, so of course that makes it predictable and familiar to military veterans. A warrior identity speaks uh, more to a strengths-based approach where we look at the skills and the attributes that you acquired during your military service and how you could best use those in your transition and reintegration. In terms of interventions, we found over 20 of those and they range from storytelling and story making um, to how you were gonna reframe your life post military service. service. Psychoeducation, of course, addressing mental health, uh, personal skills training, a number of examples there, but uh, one would be stress and anger management training and mindfulness activities ranging from yoga, meditation to breathing techniques. So as I see it, I bring together all those things. We bring in the three therapeutic factors, we bring in the aims, we utilise uh, the scoping review findings for the most vulnerable, and additionally, I want to bring in the really successful uh, peer structure that we know works uh, even in the literature from Trojan's Trek, there's a number of organisations that you've clearly heard over the last two days that utilise the peer structure really well. And then the last point there, the PhD findings that I intend to acquire next year, which will be based on my interviews with veterans about how they would define what transition is, what reintegration is, 
and what could be best done to support them and what was done well to support them in that process. So as I see it, the program doesn't just support the most vulnerable with a psychological condition, nor does it just support anyone that was medically discharged. It would be for anyone that struggles with transition and reintegration. The program couldn't be just for veterans. It has to include their significant others, friends, loved ones, children, for instance. I believe the program should be scalable. That is to say that we should have uh, a program that runs over weekends, uh, a succession of weekends for those who can't make full-time attendance. And for the more vulnerable, we need a far more immersive course that runs over consecutive days and weeks. I believe the best approach is a multidisciplinary team approach. So art therapists, psychologists, uh, exercise physiologists, nutritionists, OTs. Uh, that way we can better address the known challenges that we know veterans face in transition and reintegration and we can start to destigmatize help seeking from healthcare professionals. And then the last point there that I've got is uh, clinician veterans. It makes sense when you hear everyone else talk the last uh, two days. What I'm really advocating for is if we can find them, that's not always the case, we're looking for people that have obviously served who have now become clinicians and we utilize that to really play to the peer structure that we know works really well for the veteran community. So as I see it, I want to create a consumer-driven uh, outdoor therapy program that supports transition, transition and reintegration, not just for veterans, but their families as well. I think we could address such things as acculturation, role identity, and institutionalization. I want to promote uh, socially acceptable risk-taking activities like canyoning, just as an example, that are transformative and provide a new uh, perspective on life post-military service. I want to harness the warrior identity and look to promote self-efficacy and create that, increase the sense of confidence. Really what I'm talking about here is using the therapeutic effect of the environment with uh, engagement in purposeful and meaningful activities that elicit an adaptive response that would support transition and reintegration. Or to the very least, promote mental health within the veteran community and increase or show their reasoning why they should access uh, mental health care professionals moving forward. Thank you and thank you to the Road Home for this opportunity. Thank you.